Markets have been rough, no question. But is my portfolio really down by 2%? Not quite. Looking at my total return, my TFSA portfolio is actually up by 33%, even now at this low point. Hey guys, it's Adrian here, the Canadian in a t-shirt. And today I'll be breaking down how to measure the performance of your investments, specifically the difference between your profit and loss, P&L, and your total return. This is very important. If you just rely on the profit and loss, it can be very misleading, especially for dividend investors. These past few weeks have been brutal in the stock market. Personally, my portfolio has dropped by over 5% this past month. That hurts. In fact, this is the first time my portfolio has been down since the crash of 2020. For context, when I joined Blossom back in February, my portfolio showed an all-time gain of 12.15%. Now, when I log into Blossom, it shows an all-time loss of 2%. That's a 14% swing in the wrong direction. So why aren't I freaking out? The whole point of investing is to make money, right? So why am I okay with seeing an all-time loss? For two main reasons. One, I don't care about short-term performance. And two, I'm not really at a loss. The P&L, or unrealized profit and loss, is not the same as total return. On Blossom, it shows an unrealized loss of 2%, but my total return is still in the green, and that's because of dividends and reinvested profits. This point is very important, but first let me elaborate on point number one. I do not care about short-term performance. I've said it many times. In fact, I have a whole playlist called the Market Crash Guide. I don't care what happens to my stocks next week, next month, even next year. The short-term ups and downs don't matter to me. In my last video, I bought TD stock, one of my favorites. I don't know if TD will go up or down next month, and frankly, I don't care. What I do care about is the long-term future of the company, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, that is investing. Focusing on the long-term growth of the stock, plus I collect consistent and increasing dividends along the way. So even if we used the P&L to judge my investments, and we say that I'm down by 2%, I still wouldn't care. Even though I'm down, I'm invested in quality companies that are profitable and have a bright future. I know it's just a matter of time before they recover, and I'll be in the green once again. But now I want to focus on point number two. The P&L, the profit and loss, does not tell the whole story. What you really care about is your total return. The total return is how much money you have now versus how much money you put in. That includes income from capital gains, dividends, distributions, drips, interest, everything. The number we see on Blossom or Quest Trade is the P&L, the unrealized profit or loss. It's similar but different. If I were to sell all of my stocks today versus how much I bought them for, that's the P&L. In my case, my P&L is negative 2%. Since the market is down, my stocks have dropped in value. So if I were to sell everything today, I would have lost 2% of the money I paid for these stocks. But here's the thing, a lot of this money did not come from me. It came from dividends and profits that I reinvested. And that is the key point. The P&L only works for capital gains. It doesn't capture dividends. That's why my P&L is negative, but my total return is actually positive. And it's a big difference. Here on Quest Trade, my PL is negative $2,600, but my actual total return is positive $19,000. I'm not down 2%, I'm up 33%. Let's break it down. Here we can see that my TFSA portfolio is worth about $76,700, not nearly as high as it used to be. A couple weeks ago, it was worth over $80,000. A year ago, it was even higher, and my P&L was much higher, over 16,000 in capital gains. But today, with the market down, I've got 76,000. And remember, a lot of this money didn't come from me. It came from dividends. I've only contributed about 57,000 into my TFSA in Quest Trade. You can double check this by going to your account activity and adding up all of your deposits and taking away all of your withdrawals. But as a shortcut, click on trading and we see the summary here. Check out this video to switch between the new and old interface of Questrade. Here you see my net deposits. So over the years, I have put in 57,000 of my money 
and today it's worth more at 76,000. So the difference, my total return is $19,000 of tax free profit. Divide by the money I put in and we get a percentage, a total return of 33%. Not bad, even now at this low point. A month ago, it was higher, about 40%. A year ago, it was even higher. Total return is what really counts. How much money you put in versus how much money you have now. That's the point of investing, making sure your money grows over time, whether that's through dividends, capital gains, or a combination of both. But P&L doesn't consider dividends. It only captures capital gains. Let's break this down with an example. If I put in 57 k into a growth stock like Tesla, it doesn't pay dividends, so my entire profit only comes from capital gains. If my 57 k grew to 76 k I would have the same total return, a profit of $19,000, and my P&L would equal my total return. The book value of my shares, how much I bought them for, is 57000 and my market value, their current worth, is 76000 the difference is my unrealized profit of 19,000. So my P&L and my total return are the same because we're just looking at capital gains. But in my TFSA, I don't own Tesla. I invest in dividend stocks and I reinvest those dividends by buying extra shares through a drip. Whenever I reinvest those dividends, that money is not coming from me. It's part of my profit. Those new shares contribute to my total return, but they don't contribute to my P&L. Here's why. Those reinvested dividends increase my market value and my book value because I'm still buying new shares. Remember, book value is how much money I put into a stock. Whether that money came from me or from dividends, I still bought new shares. So the book value goes up. Every time I get a drip, my book value and my market value go up. So the difference between the two, my P&L, stays the same. That's why my P&L is lower than my total return. Don't get me wrong, the P&L is a great metric to get a quick snapshot of how your portfolio is doing, but it doesn't tell you the full story, especially if you're a dividend investor. If you only look at P&L, then my TFSA portfolio hasn't made any money because I'm not seeing any capital gains right now. So all my years of investing would have been a waste of time. That's not very inspiring. But capital gains aren't the only way to earn a profit. I'm also earning $5,500 of tax-free dividends this year, and this passive income is growing. Last year, I earned $5,000 in dividends. In 2021, I earned $4,200. In 2020, it was $3,500. Every year, my dividend income is compounding and accelerating. To me, that is inspiring. If you check out my members only videos, you can see the growth of my dividend portfolio over the past three years. So please don't get discouraged if you log on to Blossom and see a low P&L value. I certainly don't. And please do not compare yourself to another investor, especially if you're using P&L to measure your performance. Like I covered in my Tesla example, if someone is a growth oriented investor, their P&L will likely be larger, even if your overall returns are the same. The P&L value should only be used to compare your own portfolio over time. It's a quick snapshot telling you if you're up or down today. But it doesn't tell you the whole story. Your total return is what really matters. As always, I include my referral link down below to get started with Blossom and Quest Trade. So thanks everyone and I'll see you guys on the next episode of the Canadian in a T-shirt. Bye guys.